I was invited to a costume tea. That's where everybody shows up to tea in costume. So I have to make something to wear. I don't have to make something to wear, but I feel the need to make something to wear. I don't have an outfit to go with my 1890s sweater, and I don't have the time to put one together. So we're gonna see if I can make something with what I have on hand. I have this plaid dress that I made a couple years ago that I never finished. It's plaid, so I cut out the pieces very carefully so that the pattern would match nicely on the front. And then I got to the zipper and it just, I just couldn't get it right. So I put it down with the intention that I'd come back to it soon and it's been like three years. It should still fit because I'm roughly the same size and shape, but I'll need to finish it for this project. The sweater is vaguely like a modern interpretation of a retro dress. So I wanna make a sweater to go with it. So I'm going to make a cream sweater with a letter on it using leftover cream astrocryl that I used in this sweater here, the Bill Gates sweater. There's a link to that in the description and some blue I have left over from another project. I have a tutorial on how to make the images for Intarsia in my intermediate Intarsia video. I will link to that below. I've been doing some research and looking at sweaters from the 40s and the 50s, and it looks like they hit at about the waist with a little bit of extra ribbing, and then they're either three quarter or one half sleeve, and then they have these like gathered poofy sleeve heads. So looking at this, I think I can start with my set in sleeve crew neck pattern and then just make some modifications to the sleeves to get what I want out of it. But first, let me show you how I'm modifying the sleeves. All right, let's talk about sleeves. So starting from sewing patterns, let's talk about how those work. This is my pattern drafting book that I use for reference. And this is what your standard short sleeve is gonna look like. We don't do the curve in knitting because it's easier to just do hard edges with trapezoids and rectangles. And the way that you modify sleeves for sewing is a method called slash and spread, where you cut the pattern into a bunch of slices and then spread it out and then trace the new lines along them. So it still has the same basic shape, but when you spread it out, this portion is intended to be gathered. According to this book, if I want to make a puffy sleeve that's just puffy at the top, I need to slash and spread the top of the sleeve. So there's more fabric going on here that'll get gathered down later and make this shape. The way that I'm doing that with knitting pattern, let me show you. The way that the sleeves work in the pattern that I have drafted for the set in sleeve crew neck sweater is we cast on for the bottom of the sleeve and then we increase up to the shelf and then we bind off for the shelf and then we decrease towards the sleeve head and then do some short rowing to get a little more shape up here and then bind off there. If I want a puffy sleeve, this part needs to be bigger and then it's gonna get gathered down when it goes into the body of the sweater. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this line less steep so we have more edges there. And then I'm going to short row further in so, this, so the sleeve head gets taller and then I'm gonna bind off there. So let me show you what this looks like in the pattern. So when I make modifications to patterns, especially my own patterns, I like to feed all of my values into the pattern generator and then copy paste what it gives me and put it in a Word document like this. And then I make the changes that I wanna make. So this had the decreases split up into two sections and I just removed one of the sections. I'm going to knit a total of 45 rows, decrease every four rows instead of every two rows. And then for the short rows up here, I'm going to bring one needle into hold instead of two. And then I can't spell, which should surprise no one. And then I'm going to go until I have 20 needles in hold instead of 12 needles in hold. That'll make the sides less narrow and the top higher. All right, let's do this. The bottom of the sleeve is exactly as described in the pattern. two inches of ribbing, and then increases until you get to the shelf. Bind off for the shelf.
then decrease every four rows instead of every two rows. Then we short row the sleeve head. Bring one needle into hold every row instead of two. And then continue until there are 20 in hold on each side. Then bind off. You can see the top of the sleeve is more curved. The back is worked as described by the pattern, except with three inches of ribbing instead of two. Knit up to the shelf. Bind off for the shelf. Decrease to the shoulder width. Then shape the neckline and shoulders one at a time. This is done with short rows. Bind off, and the other side is exactly the same. Take the neckline off on waist yarn. We need to create the graphic for the front. My first name starts with a C, so I'll be using that. I have instructions for how to do this in my intermediate intarsia video. After knitting the bottom ribbing for the sweater, I'm taking off the river so I can see what I'm doing with the intarsia. The first pass of the carriage brings all the needles out into working position, and then I can thread the yarns into their sinkers and follow the directions from my script that tells me where the different colors go. This takes forever, but it's still faster than doing this by hand.
When I get to the bind off for the shelf, I need to reset the needles to lower working position before I can work with them. The same for shaping. I reset the needles, do a decrease, and then bring them back to upper working position. Then I switch back to the main carriage to finish this thing off. The shoulder shaping happens one at a time, just like the original pattern. Take the center of the neckline off on waist yarn. Before doing the neckline ribbing, seam one shoulder. Now we can rehang the stitches on the main bed. Reattach the river. Transfer every other stitch to the bottom bed for one by one ripping. Then knit an inch of ribbing. Leave a long tail for a sewn bind off. Then take the whole thing off on waist yarn. This is where everything went wrong. I didn't have enough weight on the piece, so the waist yarn didn't knit correctly and began to unravel immediately. The whole thing was too precarious to film, so I finished it off camera. Now we attach the sleeve. Line up the center of the sleeve with the shoulder seam, and do the same thing with the side seam and the sleeve seam. I'm threading a long length of yarn halfway into the side seam. I'm going to work bottom up from the right, and then the same on the left. Sew this as a normal seam until you get to the short rows at the top.
Then start taking one stitch from the body panel and two stitches from the sleeve to gather up the fabric there. You can see the gathering on one half here. These small holes are half-formed stitches from where I joined the new yarn. They're easy to fix when weaving in the ends. And there we go, onto the dress. I'm seam ripping out the zipper. and then carefully pinning it back in the way that I want it. Then hand basting both sides so it won't slip around under the machine. There we go, now it's perfect. Let's put it all together. I'm adding my Romana code. The pattern is from By Hand London, and I used this lovely orange wool that I got in a remnant bundle from Fabric Mart. So here it is, the final sweater. I'm pretty happy with it. I think I could probably get away with a couple more inches of ribbing. Well, okay, like one more inch of ribbing to get the waist to fit a little bit better. Uh, and I can probably do more to make the sleeve puffier, but this is sufficient for the look that I was going for. Tea has come and gone. It was lovely. Thank you for organizing. Friend who shall remain nameless. And thank you to other friend for... <laughs> so my friend had just finished a class on sourdough, so she just had like 40 loaves of sourdough in her car and we all stopped there after tea and she was handing them out and get yourself some friends who bake. It was the best bread I have ever had. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Let me know if there's anything else that you wanna see, any other techniques, any vintage sweaters out there that you think I should recreate. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this. Happy knitting. <laughs>